It's time. Hey guys, Brickview here, and welcome to my top 10 sets of 2020 list. The last video of 2020. If you missed it yesterday, there's a top 10 minifigs of 2020 video, but there were a lot of really, really good sets this year. I'm excited about this. Let's just jump right into the list. Number 10, we have the Super Mario Starter Course Adventures with Mario. So this set, I had to put it on the list. It's like the main Mario Nintendo set that we got this year. And obviously it comes with Mario, who's a really interesting minifigure character thing. It's a really nice way to get some flavor for what the whole Mario theme is like. And you get Bowser Jr. in it. So that's, that's a desirable character that you also get, which is appreciated. At number nine, we have the Charles Dickens tribute. So I've made a lot of videos about this set but I'm just, I'm really happy that we got a Christmas Carol set. That's kind of something I've wanted for a while. And I really, really like the book design. And it's kind of an easy platform to build your own mocks off of, which is kind of fun. The official build is a little interesting in that I'm not quite sure what scene it's supposed to be from the original book. But I don't really care because it's still Christmas Carol. And I like that. Number eight, we have Mario's house and Yoshi. And this set comes with Yoshi and it comes with Mario's house, which is just super, super awesome. It feels a little overpriced and the, the house could definitely use some more interior, but it is really cool to get Yoshi and Mario's house from the Paper Mario series. It just, it looks really, really nice. And the little hammock thing is interesting. So there you go. Number eight. At number seven, we have the Ninja Tuner car and we've gotten a lot of sort of the $40 oversized Ninjago cars, but this thing like turns into a helicopter and it flies and that's super awesome. And I love, there's a lot of stickers, but I love all of the graffiti in the front. It's really cool. And you get Scott, who is an interesting character and I really, really like his design. So yeah, the color scheme here is great. And it's just, it's a really unique build, I think. So at number six, we have the Room of Requirement. Now, Harry Potter has been knocking it out of the park with $20 sets for a while now, and this one is no exception. It's a part of Hogwarts that you can sort of unofficially integrate it with the rest of your Hogwarts build, and it's it's super detailed. I love that they have the sliding wall that covers the doorway, and then you can slide it out to reveal the door. Um, that's super awesome. And even on the back, you have the Umbridge proclamations that you can knock off. The fireplace is cool. The training dummy is really cool. And you get some cool new Patronus pieces as well. At number five, we have the Legacy Bounty. So I was really excited for this set, and Honestly, the minifigures it comes with aren't that interesting because it's just sort of reusing the legacy suits that I kind of already had. So there wasn't a lot interesting in the minifigures, but the build is amazing. And I love that this ship works as sort of a canon representation of the season 13 bounty, but it also is a pretty good example of the original season one, season two bounty. It's a little bit disappointing that you can't actually put any minifigures in the bridge where it should be. So for that reason, it's only number five on my list. At number four, we have Toad's Secret Hideaway. Now, this set is basically the, the parts of the Toad's treasure hunt set that is 70 bucks, but it's only for 20, which is really nice. You get Toad, who's one of the more desirable characters, and you get a little Toad house. And I don't know, there's just something about this set that's so appealing. Um, and I really like that, I think more so than any other Mario set, it really works as a standalone sort of display piece. All you would really have to do is take off the action tile in front of Toad, and you have something that doesn't need to be from the Super Mario action line. At number three, we have Gamer's Market, and this set is amazing. <laughs> uh, I love the concept of having sort of a Ninjago minifigure pack, similar to what they've been doing in City for a while, where it's a cheaper set with just a ton of minifigures. And this is really cool, and there's a lot of really awesome exclusive ones here as well. The Avatar Cole and Nia aren't that interesting, and I wish that they had exclusive prints, but we do get a new Harumi print, and this come, this is the only set with Okino, and of course, Pink Zane. 
if there was one set from Prime Empire you were going to get, this is the one because it gives you all of the interesting characters and Pink Zane, who easily is one of the best minifigures of the year. If you're at all a Ninjago fan, this set is a must have. At number two, we have the Bookshop. This was my first official modular. I had the Ninjago City and the Ninjago City Docks, which were kind of modulars, but not official modulars. The Bookshop was my first one, and I just really enjoyed the aesthetics of it. I love the birch tree out front, and of course the birch books whole aesthetic, and the, the teal and the medium nougat colors contrast, but they also complement each other so nicely. And then you have the dark blue and the dark red for the roofs, and it just, the whole package comes together and it looks really, really nice and fun. I also love the box art, which is something I have to say now because the new modulars don't have as interesting box art. The autumn sunset is just so appealing versus the black void that I guess we'll be seeing from now on. Before we get to number one, I want to mention some other sets that almost made the list, but not quite. And the first one isn't really one set, it's more three, and that is the Avatar Pods from Prime Empire. Now, these sets are just really, really cool. You get an exclusive version of the ninja that you get, and then also their Prime Empire version. And these really cool sort of arcade pieces. I would love to line these up in an arcade mock and sort of create a custom arcade that way. The reason these didn't make my actual list is I didn't want to put three sets under one rank. And... I think by themselves, none of them would really hold up with the other sets in my list, but altogether, they're a really, really nice package, and I hope to see more sets like this from Ninjago. The epic battle sets coming out next year look to be something similar, so I appreciate that. The Mandalorian Battle Pack was my first Star Wars set, just because I'm really into the Mandalorian series now, and it's really cool to just get four sort of unique but generic Mandalorians um, that you can sort of make your own stuff about. This set is really cool for the figures and being generic characters makes them easy to army build, but it also doesn't really tie in with the show in any specific way, which I think hinders it a little bit. I also want to shout out the ice cream truck, and this is just a really fun vehicle to have in your city. I love the color scheme on it, and the ice cream man on the top is just really funny and comical. And yeah, it's just, it's a cool set. And of course, number one, one, two, three, Sesame Street. I have wanted a Lego Elmo minifigure for years. And then there was the Ideas Project that got 10,000 votes. And then they actually said that it won and it became a set. And I was so happy about it. The original submission just had sort of the cartoon faces of the characters printed onto minifigure heads. And while I would have enjoyed that, I'm so glad that they broke their own rules and went with custom molds for all the heads because all of these characters look so much better because of it. The minifigures in this set are excellent. And even Oscar the Grouch, which is a little awkward and it's a little sad that we don't get a full body for him, I do like how they were able to build him and have him actually fit inside of a regular trash can piece. But the minifigures aside, the build is really, really cool. We don't get a whole lot of brownstone looking buildings in Lego, and this one is there and it's cool. And we also get a little bit of Hooper store, which I would love for them to expand upon in a future set if the Technic pins are anything to go off of. But what we do have here is amazing, and I love all of the details and Easter eggs to the show that they packed in here. So those are going to be my picks for the top 10 sets of 2020. Let me know what your top 10 sets would be in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.